Good evening. Local brides-to-be and their loved ones flocked to the Lloydminster Exhibition Grounds this morning for the 6th Annual Weddings on the Border Bridal Show. The exhibit isn't just showcasing popular wedding trends, but organizers are also giving back to the community. From pastries to wedding dresses, there is something for everyone who is planning a wedding or bridal shower. Brittany Ring is just one of dozens of vendors present to provide their services. I wanted to show people just a little something different that they might want for their wedding. A lot of people in Lloyd offer photography and I wanted to show them that there's video options there too. Weddings on the Border was started in order to have people stay local. Um, you know, we still know our brides go to Saskatoon or Edmonton, but we want to show them that local companies can help them and save them a little bit of money in the long run. It definitely helps that everything's in Lloyd and I don't have to travel because I'm already out of town so it really helps me. Weddings on the Border has also donated to the community in the past years for different causes. Something near and dear to both me and Jennifer Chikula's heart is the SPCA. Uh, she has adopted dogs. We both come from a farm background. Um, so we're donating every $2 from the $10 entry back to SPCA. Plus we've asked people to bring down extra dog food, cat food. They always need something like that. And they'll receive an extra coupon to um, enter the name into the grand prize. Franklin hopes the one-day event will continue to grow around the region. The community is really supportive of it and understands the need for um, a community-based business group to work together in this area. As for Brittany, this isn't just a chance for her to promote her business, it's also a chance for her to gather ideas for herself, and she is getting married soon. My fiancé proposed to me in February, so it's kind of good just to see what other people are doing and get ideas for our wedding coming up. Now the show will run until 7.30 p.m. tonight. Hundreds of people gathered for Lakeland College's centennial celebration last night. The night included renowned speakers who have made an impact on Canadian government and society. Bart Pedjasic reports. The Vermilion Gym was a full house as special guests and dignitaries from across Canada came to celebrate the momentous birthday. Former Canadian General Romeo Dallaire was just one of those invited. He says he's impressed with what the college has accomplished during the last century. Well, that's what you're really here to celebrate, is the fact that it, it's not just an old building that's in existence, but in fact uh, an institution that has progressed, has moved the yardsticks and has uh, brought innovative leaders uh, to the fore. Delaire spoke about the evolution of post-secondary education in the country. Institutions of higher learning like this our institutions to get rid of the borders and to get them outside uh, of their comfort zone of the region and to get them into uh, the world, which I believe this new generation is going to be far more prepared. Good evening, everyone, and it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And representatives from the Alberta government were also on hand with speeches from both Premier Allison Redford and the Lieutenant Governor on the docket. While there were no discussions about the recent budget cuts, Lieutenant Governor Donald Ethel spoke about the importance of schools like Lakeland. I think uh, having uh, universities, uh, colleges such as this is part of our makeup, particularly in, in Western Canada and rural Canada. Ethel says he visited a lot of major universities and colleges throughout Alberta, and the increase of enrollment over the past years is something to be proud of. The uh, attendance is, in my uh, simple way of looking at it, is astronomical. And I think that the enrollment, rather, is, and uh, same here at, uh, at uh, this, this, this facility. It's important that uh, we maintain those figures. Because the more we educate, the more people are going to go out in that society. Bart Pediasek, Newcap News. One of the signs that spring is around the corner, the local flea market began this morning. The weekly event now known as the R&R Market goes on every Saturday until the end of spring. I think everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Haggling started early this morning as buyers and sellers got together to make some deals. And there was a wide range of second-hand items for sale. Well, we're selling stuff from books to knickknacks to cups to flower arrangements two clocks. It's $20 to register as a vendor and receive a table. For more information, visit the Rust Market website. The market is open again March 30th.
So we're talking about the Bo Baker Hughes Bobcats. Yeah, they're in the uh, the midst of the midget AAA playoffs, and uh, they found themselves down two games to nothing to the Boston Pizza Athletics of Southside Athletic Club. The Athletics were hoping to bring out the brooms this, uh, last night and finish the sweep, but the Cats had other plans. After a 2-1 win in Game 3 last night, the Bobcats' playoff hopes remain intact. Connor James and Bobby McMahon picked up some goals for Lloyd Minster while Ryan Van Gundren chipped in with an assist. Spencer Cade stopped 27 of 28 shots for the W. The Bobcats' win meant Game 4 went this afternoon at the Civic Center. So we'll go to the Civic Center. The Bobcats with the early pressure. Tyler Bush wins a puck battle in the corner and sends it to Andrew Kep. He goes over to Steen Pastinchuk, who wires it by Jordan Paperni for the 1-0 lead. SSAC tries to tie it up a little later, but Nicholas Sharif finds the post. Then SSAC again looking for the equalizer. Jake Debruskin, but K Spencer Cade has the save. The Athletics finally get one by. Benjamin Sawa fires the one-timer from the point, but it's tipped in front by Riley Simpson. That makes it 1-1, and that's where things sit there in overtime right now. Game two of the North Division AJHL playoff series between the Bonneville Pontiacs and the White Court Wolverines went down in Bonneville last night. The Ponts were looking to grab a 2-0 lead in the best of seven series. Instead, it was the Wolverines evening things up at one apiece with a 4-3 win. Jackson Dudley and Ty Carey had three points apiece for the Ponts and sit tied for the team lead in playoff scoring with eight points in just six games. Game three goes Monday in White Court. The Lakeland College Rustlers were looking to prove once again that they are the best men's futsal team in the province. They took home the championship in the inaugural ACAC football season in 2011, followed it up with another last year and are in Olds this weekend eyeing a three-peat. The Rustlers started off on the right foot last night with a 5-1 win against the Medicine Hat Rattlers in their first game of the tourney and had a pair of games on the docket today. In the morning game, Lakeland kept on rolling with a 4-0 shutout win over Red Deer College. That meant the afternoon game against Keanu College would pretty much determine if they were going to get a spot in the gold medal game tomorrow night. Tomorrow afternoon, pardon. But the Huskies showed why they were the only undefeated team during the regular season and handed the Rustlers a 5-1 loss. The Rustlers went 1-2 in the round robin, while the Huskies went 2-0-1 which will mean a rematch tomorrow with the gold medal game on the line. Medicine Hat and Red Deer will battle it out for the bronze.